This is Evan Abrams, and in today's After Effects tutorial, I don't really have a lot of time, so to show you how much time I don't have, I'm gonna use this rollover clock. Isn't that a fancy clock? The flip clock, or rollover clock, uses a cylinder to turn cards over to display the time. It's a really neat retro thing that you'll see on pretentious people's desks and bedside tables and stuff like that. They still use it in some airports. It's very mechanical, it's very neat, and uh, we're gonna make it in After Effects. So let's flip into After Effects and flip out over this flippin' and whatever Oh, and if you want to save time and not do this, I'm actually putting the files up for download, and uh, it's like pay whatever you want and uh, enjoy. So we're inside of After Effects, and really if you want to quit any time and go download this thing, uh, you're more than welcome to, but I'm going to show you the basics of how to make at least the base 10 and the base 6 seconds counting up kind of thing. And, and hopefully you can extrapolate the rest from there. And certainly the file, if you download it, has a lot more bells and whistles involved in it. Like you can quickly change to go backwards and it's easy to change colors. But, you know, none of that is really important right now. So let's make a new project uh, that's good and uh, we'll get into uh, how to make this. The first thing to do is to conceptually realize that we are flipping over cards and that we need to first make those cards. So I'm going to make cards that are labeled 0 to 9. So first thing you need for that is new text. And so you need to type in like a 0. 300 is probably very large. You know, I call it 400. That's good. And then uh, use your align panel to stick it in the middle. And that's a swell thing you've got there and now we're going to go layer new i guess we'll make a new shape layer and then we'll add like a rectangle to it and then to that we'll add a fill and that fill i would like to be white okay and then we'll put that under the number here go into the rectangle path and we'll uh, fix its size up to be let's say 300 by 450 looks good and we'll change the roundness to be uh, 25 so that it's got some nice, nice little rounded edges on it. Good. So these are the two component parts that make up one of these card things that we're using. So we're going to go uh, shift select both, control shift C to create a uh, composition of both and we'll just call it uh, card and then this is card zero and done. So now we're going to go into the project, we're going to duplicate that rename that one not card 2 but card 1 and we need 0 to 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so 0 to 9 and now you're gonna go into each of them so we're gonna go into say card 2 here and then inside there we're gonna change it from being 0 to being the number 2 and you're gonna have to do that for all of them sorry there's just no real like easy way around that, but always remember to use the align panel to stick them all in the middle, and I'm going to just burn through these really, really fast. Watch me go. Okay, so those are all ready. Take them all and drag them all in here. So we've got uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and we know that when we animate these on, we also want it to start and end on 0. So duplicate card 0 and put that up to the top. Um, the next thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to apply color to these now. So I'm going to apply a tint to uh, card zero on the top here. And instead of mucking around with the tint in here and then applying the same tint to all of these, what if I change my mind later? Then I have to go back in and I have to change the tint for all of them. So instead, make a new adjustment layer and call that adjustment layer something like control layer and apply the tint to that layer instead, and then poke its eye out, Boop, so you can't see it. Now go back to card zero, and hold down alt, and click on the stopwatch for both of those. And we're going to write expressions that will allow us to simply map one thing to another thing. And we're going to map them to the control layer's tint, which we are then going to call uh, top tint. Because we're going to be tinting the layers that are on the top. So we take this control layer, and then lock it in so that we can just grab these things and then we're going to map this black to this black and this white to this white and that doesn't seem very impressive but take that tint copy it and then apply it to nine all the way down to zero paste it 
And then on your control layer, go back and start changing these to interesting things. So what we've done is we've used this to control not only the zero, but also the nine, the eight, the seven, the whatever. Everything now has the same tint applied to it. So just slow clap for you, that's good. Um, the next thing that we need to do to all of these is, since these are the top half of the cards, we should probably name them as such. So this is card zero top, and uh, just go through, hit enter, and uh, name them all something that you'll remember. Just because this is going to get confusing, and we are going to have a lot of layers. Okay, so we have all these top things, and now we're going to apply a mask to them. Select the layer and uh, double click on the rectangle to make a mask. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that mask and we are going to cut the thing in half. And how do you know when you've reached half? Well, you can put on the title and action safe. And then you can just zoom in and just pinpoint, you know, right, right where that is at. So just get right up in those crosshairs. You know what? I nailed it. I nailed it because I am just the golden god of this program. So... Select that mask, copy it, and then select all these layers and paste it, and there you go. So now we only have the tops of all of these, but now we need the bottoms, you know? Can't have the tops if you don't have the bottoms. We can, if you're really top heavy. So take all of these and duplicate it. And then take all of those while they're still selected and slide them below. And now, just to make it easy, we're going to change their color here to like a fuchsia, so they're really bright. We're probably going to want to rename them, just a heads up, that uh, instead of card zero top three, these are actually top zero uh, bottom. All right, so go through and rename them all just for your own, for your own sanity here. Okay, so looking good, looking good, feeling good. Now that these are designated as the bottoms, <laughs> then you also want to pull up their masks and change them from add to subtract. Okay, so now we've got all the parts, it's time to make all of the parts move. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to be setting some keyframes, going to move some keyframes. So zoom in a bit on your timeline, and we know that every second we want the next card to be up. So we're going to take all of your layers and we're going to make them all 3D. Click that box to make them all 3D. And it uh, doesn't really matter if the control layer is 3D. It doesn't, nobody cares. So top card zero here, pull up its rotation, and we're going to change its X rotation so that at one second, it's at positive 180. So it's flipping, it's going down. It's going down, down, baby. Dope street and a rainbow. And so on. That's, that's flipping down. And... The card under it right now is 9, so if we're counting down that's good, but I kind of want to count up. So I'm just going to reorganize the layers here so that it goes 0, 1, 2, and then 3, and then 4, and then 5, yeah, and then 6, 7 comes after that, 8, 9, and then 0. So when 0 comes down, 1 is right next to it. Good, brilliant. Um, so at 1, top card 0 is at positive 180. Go back 10 frames and set it to be 0, so it's going to animate from 0 down to 180. Perfect. Now take those, easy ease them, I hit F9, and then uh, I'm just going to go into this graph here. I'm going to pull the handles, you might notice I do this a lot, but I'm going to pull the handles like so, so it kind of starts to go and then snaps down, just because I really want it to, to have that clicking kind of sensation going on. So that'll that'll work for me. Um, now the next thing to do is when this thing passes uh, 90 degrees, I don't want to see it anymore. I don't want to I don't want to see that. That's not not interested. So what I'm going to do cuz I might choose to change the animation later. I already know that I don't want the opacity to be on when this goes past 90. So I'm going to write an expression Hold down Alt, click on the opacity, and I'm going to tell this thing if, and if what, is what you put in these round brackets, and if the rotation is less than, that's a less than symbol, 90 degrees, so should that ever happen? Um, if it's less than 90 degrees, you're 100. 
else, so if it's ever not that, then you're zero. I'm going to take the rotation and uh, the opacity here, we're going to copy those, and we're going to apply them to all of the top cards. All of them. All of them except for this last top card zero, because it's going to be left up when we're done. So, paste those, and now, yep, looks like the keyframes worked. Whenever you paste keyframes, make sure your playhead is where you want the first keyframe to go. So that's good. Congratulations, we're all doing super good. Now we need to move the keyframes for these things so that they're all in the right spot. So that, you know, one comes down at this point and then the next one and the next one. So we're at one second now. Let's go to two seconds. And then we're going to grab the keyframes of card one, which is going to fold down and be gone by two seconds. For card two, it's going to fold down and be gone by three seconds. And just continue in this pattern, creating those those stairs going down, making sure you check that you are indeed at four seconds, and then you are indeed at five seconds. Okay, so those are all in there, and as you can see, they form these nice orderly steps going up the side of the stuff. So that's good. So just go through, make sure they're all happening when they should be happening, and that's good. So. We no longer need to worry about animating those things. And as you can see, the top is clicking away, 5 down to 6, and so on. So that's good. Um, let's just go into the bottom now and sort them out. The first thing I want to do is change their tint to be something else. So remember when we have that control layer? So go back to the control layer, give it another tint, and call this one bottom tint. Okay, and we're going to map the white to something similar, you know, map it to something like that, but make it like a little bit darker maybe. And the same with the black, make that one um, just black, good. And what we'll do is we'll go into these layers down here, and then, you know, we'll have a look at, at their effects controls. So they have a tint going on. Um, that is currently saying reference top tint. We want to change that to all say bottom tint. So I'm just going to edit this first one here. You can just go in and manually type in bottom tint. <laughs> I think bottom is a funny word, but anyway, bottom tint. That's probably why I write it so much. And then just copy this tint, select the rest of these pinko layers, and then uh, go effect remove all so they don't have any on them, and then paste. So they have only the one we want, and now we're good to continue, and you'll find out why in a minute. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is parent some stuff to other stuff. Uh, take your playhead and put it past 10 seconds here, and then what we'll be doing is we'll be taking card 1, down here at the bottom, and parent it to card 0, so that when card 0 folds down, on the back of it will be card 1. And then card 2 is parented, of course, to card 1, and then card three is to two, and just carry on in this fashion so that you complete the sequence. Okay, so that all seems pretty normal. Go back to the beginning and let's test out your work. So go through and at one second, ah, the one comes down. And then at two seconds, two comes down. And at three seconds, three comes down. Pretty good. Four, yep. Five, yep. Six, yep. Seven, eight, nine, and back to zero. So I want you to go ahead and give yourself a hand if this has worked out. Um, and now you'll see the magic of being able to change our tint here. If I decide, you know, that's too severe, I can just change it to whatever. Or I can change the hue, or, you know, if I want it to be exactly the same as this, I can do that. I can do whatever. I'm an adult. But one thing that is important is that when you're doing this stuff that, uh, that you add a few little subtle things in here to really make this really make this work. For example, you see how even though it's 3D, I can't really tell too much except for the sort of scrunchiness of what's going on here that this part is folding down. So, I mean, it's great that it is, and I'm really happy for it, but uh, I would like it to get darker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a brightness and contrast and apply that to the uh, bending over layer here. 
And I'm going to, instead of using keyframes, I'm going to set an expression on the brightness. And the brightness expression I'm going to tie into the rotation. So, you know, we've got rotation that we've already keyframed, and we're going to attach the brightness to it. So, we know that the rotation goes from 0, and then it builds up to 180. So let's take the brightness and just pick whip it to the rotation. And uh, what that'll do, unfortunately, is ramp the brightness up to 100. So it's not really the relationship we want. We instead want it to multiply the rotation by like negative uh, 0.25. So instead, uh, that brightness, as it starts to, uh, starts to tip down, is going to be going from zero and then it's going to be getting a little bit darker and then it's going to fold under so that's what we can see and you can adjust this as you need like maybe you you feel it should be slightly darker like that but you know whatever the case then that's how you can do it really easily and then you can take this brightness and contrast you know and then you can apply it to all these other layers and then just paste it like that and then suddenly they're all behaving in that same way. Now you can you can apply a similar thing to uh, to the card bottoms as they're coming down so if we say apply that to them they don't have any internal rotation data going on with them like if you look at its uh, rotation values I mean it has an orientation value but nothing else is changing so you would have to link its value in with the corresponding card that is actually driving its uh, its change. So I know it's a little bit it's a little bit tricky. Evan tricked you with his tricks. So that's good. We've created one uh, comp that is now counting from zero up to nine and then back to zero. So let's call this comp that we've created instead of comp one. Let's call it count up base ten. I'm going to call it that because we're not only working with numbers that go from zero up to ten. Well, rolls over to zero again, but we're also dealing with numbers that are base 6. For example, when seconds hit 60, it's 59, and then it's a minute. So it goes from 59, and then it rolls back to 0. So count up base 10. I want you to duplicate that layer. And now we're going to change the second one's name to count up base 6. Open it up. And inside here, we know that if it's base 6, that we don't actually need a lot of the layers. For example, any layer that's 9, 9 down to 6. So go ahead and delete those. And again, 9 to 6, delete those. They're useless. But we still need to fill in the sequence. So card 0 bottom is now going to be parented to card 5 top. So what this will do is now we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 0. So that's all good. We've got things counting along. Let's take these two things and put them together. Let's put them together like peanut butter and jelly, you know? Let's put them on a sandwich. So we'll make a new comp, and let's make this like uh, one minute and ten seconds. What we have here is we need uh, count up base ten. We'll use that. And then we also need count up base six, so we'll use that as well. But in their current form, they're just going to count up and stop. As you can see, they're finite layers. So select them both and go Layer, Time, Enable Time Remapping. And then what this will do is it allows us to extend the ends of them as much as we want. So for the first one that's count up base 10, go to 10 seconds. Make sure you're completely on 10 seconds. Set a keyframe there, so we have keyframes at 0 up to 10. Delete the last keyframe, because we don't need it. And then Alt, click on the stopwatch, and type in L-O-O-P, capital O-U-T, spells loop out. Set a couple of brackets, put some quotes in those brackets, and type in the word cycle. And now what will happen is this will go, you know, it'll go to 0, and then again it'll continue. So at 11 it'll count another one and so on. So this one will keep counting for us. And that's great. That's exactly what we want. But the top layer, count up base 6, we don't want it to count at the same time. In fact, when count up base 10 reaches 10, base 6 should only have gone to 1. So change its time remapping value to uh, 
zero zero, so it's one second in. And then you can delete its phrase its thing back there. That's totally useless too. So as this one's counting up to 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 zero again, this one's flipping down to one. So I think that uh, that works out marginally well for us. Um, so that's t that seems timed up, you know, mostly mostly correct. Uh, but I mean, I have two versions in the file you can download. There's one that goes slow like this, and there's one that clicks through faster. If you want to do the click through faster method, hold down Shift, move back 10 frames, and then just set a new uh, time remap in here at uh, 15 seconds so that they both line up and spin over at the same time. So, whoop, there you go. So that's that's doing it. That's getting it done. You know, so I think that that is doing it. Now, if you want this to continue and you want to get on to, um, you know, at 20 seconds, you're going to need uh, you're gonna need another keyframe on here. So now it's 2.0 and then back 10 frames. We are at... Uh, at uh, 1 second 15 clicks them both through cool cool so that's all good and then you need to you need to obviously continue that drive you know so that things aren't weirdly stuck like this one is for some reason that's weird um, you know what it is I think my keyframes are off in here somewhere so let's go find the culprit here he is so at two seconds, I had one of these keyframes off. So if things start to bugger up for you, that's probably what it is. Anyway, so back in this comp, let's uh, let's take this all the way through to a whole minute. So at 40 seconds, this thing needs to be at four, and then at you know 50 seconds, this thing needs to be at five, and then at 60 seconds this thing needs to be at six yeah it needs to be at six and then it can cycle through then you can apply the loop out here you could have typed this in whenever you want but it just gets a little bit confusing so then it'll cycle through exactly what it had done before and then uh, it'll it'll cycle through another one so there you go and then of course you need to put in those keyframes and the quickest way to do that is to copy these paste them a little bit ahead and then uh, just pull this back a few frames so it pulls them all back and now they're all doing it so there you go you've got a 30 second counter um, you should probably make it look a little bit better tweak up the colors um, one of the things you might want to do is go in and just fix that little texture ripping I don't know if you noticed that but here check it out this is the texture rip where you can see moving ahead that there are these little little cuts in here where one layer is interacting with another and you can kind of see one layer through the other layer and what that often is is because the 3D-ness of the classic 3D doesn't handle overlap and just that kind of kind of area very well now I'm not I'm not totally sure what the best solution to that is usually it involves some adjustment layers a little bit of trimming uh, for my money though because I wanted to complete the look of the cards I know they all have a cut in the middle because they don't actually line up so what I would do is I would go for example to uh, card one here I would apply a mask to it and then that mask what I would do is I would just use it you know to uh, create a little wedge in the middle of this thing just like that and then uh, set its mode to subtract so it's carving it out select that mask all right and make sure that it is applied to every possible layer that you have so it cuts a hole through all of them make sure you apply it to both stacks you know do that and then when you go back to your comp just look at that there's no more texture rip there's no more problem so that's a good way to uh, get this thing going 
Uh, certainly you can get more complicated, you can get more shading, you can get all that stuff. But like I said, if this is hard and you want to skip ahead, just uh, use the link, go to Gumroad, and uh, just download it off of me there. And, uh, you know, it's, I mean, it says pay whatever you want on it, so if you just want it, then take it. But uh, if you feel like donating, then uh, go nuts with that too. So that does it. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If you run into trouble, you know, comment away. Just let me know. I'll try to help you through. Um, if you want to download this thing, just click on the link, download it, um, and uh, have fun with that. I'm Evan Abrams. Comment, rate, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Uh, if you like this, share it with your friends. Uh, if you know someone else who likes to do things in After Effects or stuff like that, send it at them or, you know, just just send it to people who don't even use After Effects. Send it to them, too, because they might like it. Anyway, I'm Evan Abrams. New tutorial every week. And uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you around the internet. Tweet at me and comment and blah, 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 all that good stuff. And thank you so much for coming around, and uh, I'll see you next time.